So we're gonna go over the charging setup that we have for our Rivian R1S when we are at a campsite. So when we're here, we charge the car overnight just like we would when we were at home, which is a really like great convenience when you're out um, and you're at the campground, you wake up, you, your car's charged. And you have, if you have a setup like we had today, where you have 30 and 50, we can run both as long as we're dialing stuff down in the car. So we'll show you a little bit of, of that too. So the first thing that we have is our Lectron uh, Tesla to J1772. And that's because we choose to use a first generation generation Tesla charger because this guy can pull more amps than the charger that we got from Rivian. Um, if you are use, just using your regular travel charger, then you don't have to have the adapter, but we have the Tesla, so we do use the adapter as well. And you can purchase a 40 amp travel charger if you want to. Um, that's another option that you have. We just already had the Tesla one because we previously had a Model X, so we just keep using that and using the adapter. Um, then, essential to camping with an EV is going to be a 50 amp extension cord um, because most of the time your um, your travel charger is not going to be long enough to reach the power pedestal. They're set up for the campers. They're not set up for an EV. So you're really going to want to get yourself a 50 amp. And we'll put a link to the one that we use in the description below. We really like it. It's pretty lightweight for a 50 amp uh, extension cords. We've had way heavier ones in the past. So we'll put a link to this one down below. Then if you come to the power pedestal, So as you can see here, right now we have our camper hooked up to the 30 amp because it's a really nice day. We're not having to use the AC. We have the windows open. So we just went ahead and used that power for the camper. Um, but we can do put the car on 30 amp if we want 50 amp for the camper. And we do that with this EV specific adapter for 30 amp. So it goes 50 to 30 amp so that we can uh, use the 30 amp for the car. Without an EV specific adapter, it will not work. The one that you have for your RV is not gonna work for an EV. The one that we're using for our RV will not work for our EV. So this is our EV one, that's our RV one, and you have to have both, unfortunately. And then we just have the car um, plugged into the 50 amp with the extension cord that's getting the charge just like it would at home, because um, we have 50 amp at home as well. I mean, really, we're not bringing that much extra from what we would have if we were just having our RV. We bring our 50 amp extension cord before we had an EV in case the power pedestal is far off. So, you know, really we just have the adapter and the travel charger and that's really the only extra thing we're bringing with us. So you can see right now we're charging on that 50 amp. We're getting nine kilowatts um, and we're pretty high in our range right now. Um, so in our battery, we're at 86%. So only had about two hours left, but we don't need to fill up all the way. We've got a short trip back home. Um, so what we wanted to show is that when you, if you're worried about how much power you're pulling from the power pedestal in a Rivian or a Tesla and some of the other EVs, you can come in and you can um, turn down what the car is, is pulling. And so that can protect the pedestal from overheating. So if you're worried about it, just come in, jump in, and then, um, uh, level it down. So when we were charging on 30, our 30 amp plug instead of the 50 amp earlier, we lowered it down to about what? Uh, 24. Yeah. So we, we just came in here and we bumped it down to 24 amps so that we knew that we weren't going to be pulling too much. So one thing you do want to watch for is when we plugged into the 30 amp here, um, it was trying to pull over 40 amps. So we needed to bump it down and make sure, because if it's going to try to pull that, then you are going to trip the breaker. You're going to run into issues. So just be aware of that. Once you plug it in, come in, check that everything's sitting where it needs to be. Um, and then you can let it charge as long as you've bumped it down, just so you don't run into any problems. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about charging in a campground, be sure to leave those in the comments below. Follow along on our next adventure when we take our Hummer EV down to Kansas City next week. We'll see you in the next video.